Hey, I was watching these uh, live videos uh, last night, sitting around the, the bone zone here. I was watching these uh, these three live videos that this that were put out by uh, this guy uh, going by Max Ryder. Okay, so punch in Max Ryder in your YouTube search and find his three videos and check them out. They're real good videos. And uh, he also goes by the name Road Gambler. And uh, you can go on Google and search him because he's got a blog. Just punch in Road Warrior, or excuse me, RoadGambler.com and you'll get into his site. And uh, I guess he's going to go on the road and uh, do some gambling and, and do a blog on it, kind of like my, my Million Dollar Run. I mean, I don't know if he got the idea from that, uh, but check him out. I read some of his blog. He, he seems like a pretty interesting uh, dude. So I want to put a shout out to him because he don't have a whole lot of subscribers over there. So uh, he should have a lot more on them videos because there's they're, they're some great... If he's going to start putting out some live videos like that, might be something you guys want to subscribe to and check out. So I'm putting out a shout out to the Max to uh, Max Ryder and the Road Gambler, okay? Now, I want to talk about one of those videos because it struck me when I watched it. He's got three uh, three live videos that he, that he taped from a casino, and they, they're part one, part two, and part three. And I want to talk about the part three video. Uh, I was watching that, and, I was, and he captured the guy from Stick Left One, he throws a pretty good throw. Actually, he throws 27 throws and, and kills that six. I think he hits like six sixes in this throw. And uh, But it's the throw that caught my eye because I did a video on what he's doing in that in that throw. I'm not saying he got this throw from me, and I'm not saying he ever, even ever watched the video or, he was, or he's a subscriber. I have no idea. But I did a video over a year and a half ago, which I called the spider grip, okay? It's where you come down and just use all your fingers to grip the dice and all the you know all around the dice like that. You know you're just completely gripping this dice. Okay, and I called it the spider grip. I used the hard way set, and I threw it from stick left one on a hard surface table. Now he's not using the the hard ways, uh, or at least not all the time. He's just putting threes on top. He's just moving his dice around, and he don't he doesn't put them in the V shape. He just puts them in a regular uh, like a hard way set type three, and that's all he's doing. He's not worried about what's on the side, so it's kind of like my random, my control random type of throwing too. It's like he's combined two of my video or two of my throws together: the spider grip plus the random, controlled random uh, type throwing, and then he's coming down gripping him. But he's coming straight up like this, from what I can see. Now, of course, in in, in my video, what I did, I did kind of a pendulum. Not a big pendulum, just kind of where you just kind of brought it back a little bit. And then when you throw in the dice, you're not throwing straight. You're kind of bringing the dice up like this. So you're kind of coming up like that when you throw. Not straight. Alright? So, I thought I'd redo a video on that because I remember that grip. It was a real nice grip and throw. Now, what I'm going to be using is my... Four, five, six, four. Uh, like I said I used this video, uh, or just uh, this set in my last video. Okay. Like I said, all I'm gonna do is set my dice. I'm gonna come down, grip it all the way around from the table. I'm just gonna bring back a little bit and then throw them in. All right, it's gonna be a hard six. That's our point. Now, if you decide to to use this uh, exact die set, if you're going to try to throw this, I think you can use the hard way set. I mean, you, I mean, I don't think I already know you can use a hard way set because I used it in my last video. And you can even try the die set that he's using in his video, where he's just putting threes on top. But if you're going to use this die set here, put your house on nine because you're going to hit the nine at least one time every single time you throw this die set. And you're going to hit it multiple times if you stay in for a long game. Like somewhere in the mid-teens, you're probably going to hit nine, four, or five times. So, put 
Put your house on nine, folks, if you're going to use this die set. Hey, there it is right there, people. A nine. There you go. We just got us a new house. Hey, it's going to be a four. Be a five. You know, when I see something new out there that people are coming out with that's innovative and kind of really, you know, good to the core of, core, uh, of crafts, like what this guy I think is starting to put out, you know, putting out some good live videos, coming in with a blog where he's going to start writing up what he, uh, I guess, his adventures of a, of a rogue gambler. Uh, you know, from, from what I read from him in the blog, he's not a professional gambler. He's actually got a job, so he's kind of doing this kind of like on the side, doing a, you know, just making an extra income. And, uh, and yeah, you know, like I said, I just found him interesting, so I just thought I'd put him out there so you guys can go check him out. Maybe you guys will like him too. Or And, uh, you know, I, I like watching stuff on like craft too, man, you know. Not my own, but I like watching other people, see what other people are doing. Uh, you know, plus it can give me some new ideas also, keep me fresh, okay? But I want to stay fresh with my video, I don't repeat. And if you notice, I don't really repeat a whole lot of stuff. Uh, you know, I want to be able to come out with different stuff in each video. I don't want to do the same thing over and over again, talk about the same thing over and over again, because it gets stale. It gets boring, and you guys ain't going to like it. So I try to stay fresh as possible uh, in everything I put out. And, of course, it's all about contents, people. It's not about flashiness, okay? There's a lot of people that have made videos and, 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 or, and tried coming out and doing stuff, but, you know, they were into that flashy stuff, and their content wasn't real. I mean, at least that's what I seen. So I didn't really stay with them people myself. Now, I'm just speaking for myself. You guys uh, have your own opinions. Of... And, you know, I don't want to get that way with me where people come out, yeah, you know, he was kind of cool at first, but then, you know, he got stale, you know, and so I quit watching him. So that's why I kind of keep, try to do something different in every video, different type of throws. Uh, but I'm not throwing to be thrown, people. I, I actually take these throws to the casino before. I've never done a video on a throw or a dice set that I didn't try out myself first. Okay, that, that's key right there. I mean, I'm not just coming out here making enough stuff and then making a video on it. Cause it's not going to work, okay? And if I have failure, if I have 100% failure, again, people are not going to watch me uh, because it's, it's fake and it's, they're not going to they're not going to win. And what I put out is not fake. All you got to do is go read my comments from people that are winning with what I'm showing, uh, what I'm talking about, because it's real. I'm not out here trying to pull the wool over anybody's eyes. I'm not here trying to make money off of anybody. Um, I'm just showing you what my experiences are, what I'm doing, what I'm learning, how I'm winning at the casino. That's what it's all about. And when I see something like what this guy's doing, I'm thinking, yeah, he's on the same line with what I'm doing, so let's, let's give him a shot. Let's see what he can do. So that's why I'm putting him out there. It's another hard six, people. If you're counting, that's three hard sixes.
There's some money made right there. You can hit three hard sixes and what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight throws. And you can hit three hard sixes and eight throws and you know they're coming. And you got that bet set to, to work for you. That's how you make money, folks. That's why it's good about, that's what's good about dice setting and control throwing. Because your throws are carbon copied from one to the other. That's where you learn what you're hitting. Like I told you, just put our money on, put your house on that nine, boom, we smacked it. You know what I mean? But I know I'm going to hit that. At least once. Okay, boom, there's a nine. So you talk about it and it comes up again. You know, I'm going to keep my eye on that hard six. Now, if, that, if I'm going to be hitting that hard six like this every time I throw this, then I'm going to practice. I'm going to be prepared for it in the casino. I'm going to lay some money right off the bat on the hard six. See, if I hit it, then I'm going to parlay it. I'm just parlay that thing. So I know I'm hitting it two or three times. I'm going to parlay that whole bet. And when I'm going to hit it again, then I'm going to take it down, make some money off of it. See, and if you can do that, on a regular basis, man, you're making money on this. That pays nine to one, man. That's some big time money there, or odds, if you're making. All right, so that's going to be your point hit. Spider grip, people. Strip that. Just cover them dice up. And just throw a little flip to it. It's going to be a six. That's going to be our point. I mean, SOR on this throw, you're probably in the mid teens with it. Probably mid teens to even upper 20s, or excuse me, lower 20s on this thing. If you, uh, you know, learn to repeat your mechanics properly, throw correctly, I always say, you know, you can start getting into, you know, high teens to low 20s on your throw, and you're not going to throw them every time, people, but say you can throw three out of five sessions where you throw mid-teens to lower 20s and three throws out of five, you know what, you're going home with a lot of money from the casino, folks, because... You're going to be able to bet a lot and make a lot of money. All right, so that's going to be our point hit. That's going to give us five sixes, see? So, you know, that's what I'm saying. If you can hit a, you can hit a repeater number like that, if you're hitting the same number a lot, like six, you know, we did five sixes, man. I showed you how to do that, man. Just put $60 on that six, press it up, Two times, full press it twice on your third hit, you're taking down, I, I think it's $540 a hit after that. So, uh, that's how you win a lot of money in this game, people, by getting a throwdown pack. And you know the numbers that you're hitting already before you even walk into the casino, folks. So now you know where to put your money at. You know how to bet it because you practice it. You press, you press, you pull. That's how you win. That's how you get your game down. All right, so that's off the table there.
going to be at the camp. I really like this throw. This is a uh, oops. This is a pretty good throw right here, man. I, I really like. I did. I, you know, I rem, I'm, you know, I remember. I, I like the spider grip, man, because you really got those dice pretty well gripped in your hand, and then when you just toss them like that, it's got you a good die. You gotta have a good die set to to take to you know get you into a throw like this. See, we're already into our team, which is our SOR. Okay, so this is where we're gonna. This is where we want to be on every throw. I mean, we want to practice till we get down, and we're throwing like this: five out of five, four out of five, three out of five sessions. We're hitting. We're throwing throws exactly like this: carbon copy throws. We're hitting at six. We're hitting at ten. We're hitting at nine every time, like I told you. And you know, we know where to put our money. And this is how you establish a, yourself in, a, in the game. I mean, this is how you 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 get your reputation going. I mean, you just you start to be solid. You play this way at the games and at the tables, and then everybody begins to know you, and they know you, your face. And they, they walk in a casino and they're looking for your face at that table. And they want to get on that table that you are, that you're on, because they know you're a consistent shooter that shoots in the teams. Okay, and everybody gets your game down and they know what you're doing. But you gotta be careful of that, folks, because like I told you before, it isn't just what you make at a table, it's it's what the table loses while you're the thrower, and you get credited for all them that loss. So if they're losing $10,000, dollars 30000 a session on your throws, that's going towards you. So, you say, so it isn't just what you're making, it's, it's the table loss, okay? It's the total table loss is what the dealers, and that's what them pit guys are doing, and that guy behind him that's standing there with the computer, because he's making note of all these times you come in there and you throw, and they're making notes of table losses, session losses that are getting credit to you because you're an excellent shooter, and all these people know you, and, they, and you can fill up a table. I've been there, people, and you, you know you, you got to watch for that because you can fill up a table. Because once people know you, they want to play with you, and they load up a table, they maximize that table, and everybody's betting big because you're a consistent shooter. Even if you're just shooting into the teens, you can make thousands of dollars off of this throw right here. I mean. People know how to bet right. They can make already off this throw five to ten thousand dollars easily. And if you got ten people doing that, think of the losses right there. And you're getting credited for that because you're the shooter. So you got to be careful once you establish your throw, you become consistent. And that's why I like playing on an empty table. Hey, there's our nine again. That's why I play a lot on an empty table because I don't want people betting big time on me and making money because it's going against me at my local casino. Now, if I travel, which I do a lot of traveling, I don't get into a lot of stuff that I do. Uh, I mean, so far in two years, I've, pretty, I've stayed pretty much private in what my finances are and what I do. There's a lot of people out there to try to guess what I do and and you know guess my money and all this stuff which they got no business trying to do that but they do and they and they say a lot of stuff about me that ain't true okay it's gonna be a 12. but it's something you got to be aware of once you become a uh, a shooter a steady shooter a triple a shooter got to watch your games people you got to watch your table losses especially at local casinos you don't want to do it at your local casino on the road yeah you know if you're taking a trip to Atlantic City to uh, Tecumseh uh, or Tupelo Mississippi got a viewer out there been, I've been talking with that lives out there uh, I got six casinos there I'm gonna take a trip up there and check them out 
not too far from me. Never gone that way in my travels. Okay, it's going to be a five. That's, that's one thing that struck me about the, uh, the road gambler, how he said what he's going to do. I think he's going to do what, I'm a little secret out, kind of what I do. I take road trips myself. Uh, I don't talk about them. I don't, I don't write about them or nothing like that. But I like to, you know, shoot out one way for a weekend and just hit a casino. Uh, I, I advise you if that's what you're going to do, if you want to make money, that's how you play the game. I think that's what this road gambler is going to do. And I'm like, hey. But he's going to blog about it. I never thought about doing that. But, you know, that's how I make my money. Is by these, these road trips. I mean, I'm not going across country. Uh, you know, there's, there's five states around me that have casinos. So I can shoot to a certain state, to a certain city. For a weekend. For Actually, I don't even go on weekends. I go during the week. So I know when I play, I'm not getting on full tables. That was a bad throw. I didn't like that throw. That's an eight. You want to be consistent in what you're throwing, folks. It's, it's how you throw throws like this by, you know, your mechanics, being able to control and repeat your mechanics, and you're going to have good throws and same outcome throws more often. Okay, so that's going to be a hard four. It's going to be a point to hit. Alright, there's whoop, we're on our come out, man. We hit our seven, but we hit it at the right time. We are on our come out. Let's check where we're at here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, twenty. Twenty-one, twenty-two. Our twenty-third throw is our seven. And we got lucky. This might have ended the game. We've been on a point, we've still been an excellent throw at 23 throws. But we're lucky. We're off point. We get to keep going. This is why in my SOR, and I get people all the time, there's no such thing as an SOR. This SRR, you know, it's like all these people that are brainwashed and they don't know how to decipher anything in this game of crap. Uh, this is why I don't count this seven. It's, it, this, it's not even a seven. I would have made money off of this throw, just like any place bet. So why would I count this seven as a something bad toward me and that's what people do in SRRs they count their sevens as something bad toward you and this is not nothing bad now if it would have been my out there's my seven that's my SOR it's my seven out ratio that's the only bad seven you can throw is your out that stops your game not anywhere in the middle you can throw 20 sevens on, on point I mean on come out throws and none of them do anything to you only thing that hurts is your small, tall, all bet. It doesn't mess with a fire bet. It only messes up your small, tall, all. It's the only damage it does in the game of crafts when hit on come out throws. And most tables don't even have that bet. So you're making five bucks off of that throw if you got a five dollar table. You're making ten if you got a ten dollar table. So there's nothing bad with that throw. It's not even a seven. It's a score hit. That's what it is, man. That's exactly what it is. It's a score hit. I got paid 
The dealer hand me chips when I hit that seven. That is a score hit. Okay, there's that hard six again, people. That's four of them right there. That's a good repeater to have, man. Imagine that. You prepare for that and you're parlaying up to that. Even if you started off with $10, man, that fourth throw could have made you probably somewhere around seven, eight thousand dollars if you were parlaying from a ten dollar bet. Here's our favorite number right there, our nine. It's gonna be four of those hits. going to be a pot. You know, when you go to the casino, I know you got a lot of distractions, got a lot of people. Got dealers on you. Hey, and this, here's a good example, too. If you watch uh, Max Ryder, I think it's part one, his first video, he actually throws in. He's from the back throwing. And he's throwing pretty good, actually. And you see a good example of how the stick person wants to get you out of your game. She jumps his butt for not hitting the table. And I will say this, he took her bait and he started yelling at her. And you could tell by his throw, his next few throws that he was throwing mad. He got out of his game because of this dealer or this stick person jumping him. All, what I would have done and what I've learned to do, and I, I, I used, I've done what he did before too, and I've learned that you can't let these, and he was hitting the walls, but, you know, they want to stop your throw. So they're going to come up and say stuff to you like that. And they just know they're going to get under your skin. You're going to change your throw. Like you can see how he starts throwing angry in that throw, in his throw after that. Okay, that's going to be our point hit. So that's a good example. Watch part one and watch that stick woman jump him for not hitting the wall to try to mess him up. And I think it did work because I think he throws like three more times and then sevens out. So he did what my, you know, my counter to that is, as soon as she said that, I say, my bad, I'll clean up my act. Or I say, yes, ma'am, no problem. And go on with what you're throwing. Stay in your same, you know, mentality. Don't let that get you off your game because out of the blue, they're going to snap. They're going to snap you so fast, and you've got to be knowing this already. No matter what they say, or any other thrower, because or any other person, because people will upset you also. So you've got to be prepared for that. It's got to be part of your game plan that you can't let these. And they come at the least time you're thinking about it. That's what makes them. That's how they. They get you and get you off your game and distract you because you're not ready for it. Now, if you're not ready for it, saying, okay, I guarantee she's going to say something, you're ready for that. She's going to hit you when you're not ready. Same with other throwers. They're going to hit you with something that's so ridiculous, so outrageous, at, at the time you're least expecting it, okay? <clears throat> okay, so it's going to be a, a hard can. It's going to be a point. So you already got to know how to play those those moments out and just ignore them. You can be on a throw like this and something's going to happen during that throw that's going to distract you. That's going to stop your throw. And you can keep going and maybe double what we already got now. We're probably close to, we're in the 30s in this throw and I don't want to stop. So, you know, someone's gonna, something's going to come at me and I, I, I know it is, I'm going to be prepared for it, and I'm just going to ignore it, or I'm going to brush it off. 
you know, stick to what you know, and that is throwing correctly, people, by staying within your game, get in that zone. You've heard me talk about the zone. Teach your mechanics. That's the key to any distraction. Just keep repeating your mechanics to overcome these distractions because it works, people. Okay, so that's going to be another six. We're popping this six now. been a while since I finished the throw. I had, I've been having some viewers on me about that saying, don't finish your throws anymore. Hey, it's going to be a craft three. You know, why don't you finish your throw? Why are you stopping at five throws? Well, I'm just showing you in my video that, you know, you play to a certain amount, you pull your bets down. So there's no need to go on with showing a, a, a throw because I, 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 you know, my message was 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 reached. So I, I stopped the video. So it's been a while since I went ahead and finished the throw out. So, you know, so this is for you guys to stay on me by hey, finish your throw. There you go. I'm finishing out a throw for you. I didn't stop. You know, eight throws in or ten throws in. It's going to be our favorite number, folks, our nine. All right. You know, we got that nine. It's, it's slowly keeping up with that six. Now, that six has been popping now, all right? See okay, what we got. We got one, two, three, four, five. So we got eight sixes. And we got five nines, okay? Now, I didn't say we was going to hit nine a lot of times. I just said we're going to hit nine every single time we throw this, at least once, but generally multiple times, okay? So put your house on that nine if you're going to use this dissector, you're going to pop that nine. And what I mean by putting your house on it, throw $120 on that nine, boom, when you pop it, that's $168. You can pull it down right there and make $168 every time, every session you throw this by hitting that nine. Or you leave it on there, press it up, my God, man, you kept pressing, you'd be making $1,000 a hit off of this nine easily. By just starting off with $120 and not risking anything. Okay, it's going to be an eight. Now, I'm going to be doing a, uh, a re uh, or a part two of my video, um, you know, the video uh, or the, uh, the throw that got me banded from a casino. Uh, two reasons why I'm going to do a, a, a part two to that, to that video is number one, I, I've got a lot of interest in that throw. Um, people have been asking me more about it. I know I didn't get into a whole lot. Or I could, you know, I could, or let me put it this way, I could get into more of that throw, and that's what the part two video is going to be about. Where I could get into, talk about more of the throw. Because there's a lot of people out there who got these crazy bouncy tables, right? And that's all they got. So they want, you know, a winning throw to do it. And that, that is the throw to play. I'm telling you right now, that throw works, okay? So... But it's a hard throw, okay? It's a tricky throw. It's a hard throw, okay? I'm not going to get into a whole lot about it because I'll, I'll actually want to bring it up in the video. So, but that's, that's one of the reasons why I'm going to do this. The other reason is, of course, I got attacked again for that video on another Facebook craps website, okay? Uh, 
And of course, he singles out that video. Doesn't talk about videos like this. He singles out that one, uh, which shows the ignorance of the guy who runs that site. And I'll give a kind of a heads up on it. His name is Rick Burner. Okay. Uh, I will say this: if you want to join his site, take a pillow with you, because that is one boring site and it will put you to sleep, okay? But, I mean, it shows, you know, the ignorance of him because he doesn't understand that throw on a bouncy table. He thinks you should be able to lay your dice down perfectly against the wall on a radical bouncy table. Come on, people, you guys play on these tables. You're not, you're not gonna lay your dice down next to the wall like that. That's a good throw. That's why I like playing on a hard surface table. I can put the dice next to the table, but you ain't doing that on these crazy bouncy tables on a consistent basis. I'm not saying you can't do it every now and then, um, but you're not gonna do it on a consistent basis. That's why they made and built that type of table. You know, he's talking about, oh, look at the dice, what they're doing. Yeah, look at the dice. That's not my throw doing that. That's my table. I made this side of my table a radical, bouncy table. I mean, them dice go everywhere. Just like you do at the casino, real life casino. So what this guy's talking about is, is craziness, man. He's saying, oh, that's a random throw. Well, exactly. You can't do dice control on a bouncy table. Now you can do control throwing and try to do some sort of a dice direction, but you're not going to do straight up dice control, what they call dice control on a radical bouncy table. Come on, man. Quit showing your ignorance, man. Anyway, I'm going to do a video that, yeah, I'm probably going to attack that guy on that video. So if you guys like me when I attack people, you definitely want to see the, uh, uh, the throw that got me banded part two because I will attack this guy all right because I do offend myself I know a lot of people say don't bring attention to these people don't let them get to you he's not getting to me actually I want to thank the guy because he has what I call barely, barely 400 followers okay and this is one reason why he's jealous of me because he looks at my subscriber list then he looks at his follower list and he sees what people really want to watch. Hey, there's our favorite number again, folks. There's that nine. You know, so he's got, he's barely staying afloat, okay? And, I mean, I'm glad he brought me attention on his site because out of his barely 400 subscribers, he... A lot of them probably didn't know about me, so now they're going to check me out, and they're going to come over here, and they're going to say, hey, and they're going to read your guys' beautiful comments that you guys gave me, and say, hey, these people are winning with this stuff. This guy's showing some pretty good stuff, how to win. Boom. They become subscribers. So, thank you, Rick, for bringing me up on that. I appreciate it. 